Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Meepolis and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at Snapdragon by Kat Lay, published by First Second in 2020. As far as warnings go, there's a lot of roadkill. It's a middle grade book, so not graphic, but I know dead animals can be upsetting for some people. According to her Twitter profile, Kale is a quote, comic book creator, a writer slash cover artist for Lumberjanes, creator of Snapdragon, she, her, resident of Chicago. Flipping the book over, the official summary is, Snapstown had a witch. At least that's how the rumor goes, but in reality, Jax is just a Crocs-wearing, internet-savvy old lady who sells roadkill skeletons online after doing a little ritual to put their souls to rest. It's creepy, sure, but Snap thinks it's kind of cool, too. They make a deal. Jack will teach Snap how to take care of the baby op- possums that Snap rescued, and Snap will help Jax with her work. But as Snap starts to get to know Jax, she realizes that Jax may in fact have real magic and a connection with Snap's family's past. The art is soft and energetic, the frames make the everyday dynamic and interesting, and the colors are a bit muted, but it is full color. As the summary indicates, while it's not an important part of the plot plot, gender, identity, and expression are important themes in the book. This is communicated largely through the way that people are drawn, plus the way the characters develop through the story but is named in a brief but important mother-daughter conversation. A great way of introducing more diverse gender to children through fiction without turning it into a PSA. A diversity of sexuality is also woven nicely into the book. We also get some elder butch lesbian representation, which I absolutely adored. Obvious to me anyway, this book did remind me a bit of both Bingo Love and Kiss Number 8, but in a way that was super lighthearted and adorable. Unlike in Kiss Number 8, for example, where There was a heady mix of homophobia and transphobia that had to be worked through. Snapdragon and company only run into a very negligible amount of bullying that we move through rather quickly. And in Bingo Love, I know some people's enjoyment was cut short by the messiness of the relationship, and this book's timeline avoids that struggle of conscience entirely. Elder bi slash pan representation, question mark? This seems very likely. Race is obviously an important part of the book visually, if not plot-wise, certainly visually. Should it have been talked about more? Assuming, as I am, that LA is white, although I could be wrong, it's probably for the best. It certainly would be worse to have gone further and done it badly. What do you think? Class is presented in a very positive way, the daughter of a single mother who just broke up with a toxic ex and hopefully on her way into a much better relationship. There's a lot of time where Snapdragon is left to her own devices. This would generally be used to show Snapdragon as attention-seeking and or perhaps getting involved in, quote, trouble. But it's not. Snapdragon's family is poor and her mother has to work a lot, but Snapdragon understands this and they have a great relationship and there's other chosen family elements that come into play and are wholly positive in her growing up. Disability representation is played with a bit, with Lei showing characters who seem like they might be sinister because of missing limbs, etc., but they are cute and good. And maybe it's because this year has been so horrible and or the age of this book is targeted at, I want to rate this book 5 out of 5 stars. So I will. Bye all, keep reading, and resist white supremacy. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.